So I was thinking about it, right? And if you live in the United States, you have an estimated 77.3 years before you're expected to lease a casket and we spend a third of that sleeping. Or at least we're supposed to. Saying we're supposed to get eight hours of sleep a day is like telling New Jersey drivers there's a speed limit. Or telling people that the serving size for Chips Ahoy is two cookies. It's more of a suggestion and no one in their right mind looks at this and stops themselves at two. But that still adds up to well over 20 years that we spend lying in a dress rehearsal for death. It's to the point where you gotta wonder just how much we would get done if we evolved past the need for sleep. I mean, just look at dolphins. They didn't have a choice. Cause unlike us, dolphins don't breathe involuntarily. Every breath they take is a choice. Which is good because when your home address is the ocean yet you breathe air for a living, having that reflex at the wrong time is a fast track to getting flatlined. Alternatively, the problem with having to consciously choose to breathe is going unconscious once means going unconscious full time. But the trick that dolphins and, well, cetaceans in general use is that they only rest one half of their brain at a time and just switch off between the two. And with the right half of the brain being responsible for the left side of the body and vice versa, dolphins literally sleep with one eye open, with that eye being on the same side as the half of the brain being rested. And it's funny, because dolphins evolved from a land animal, meaning they must have seen something so crucial on land that they spent the rest of their existence evolving to never go back. That's not the only sleep superpower cetaceans have that we don't. Dolphins and humans are actually a lot alike, and one of the child-friendly, safer guidelines ways is that when a dolphin decides to have a baby, it basically sacrifices any sleep for the near future. And that's because baby dolphins don't sleep for the entire future first month of their lives, which means, by extension, neither do their mothers. And it's not like they can just use an iPad to negotiate a commercial break's worth of sleep. Now, 24 hours of non-stop movement in an ocean where leaving your child unsupervised for even a second can turn you from mother to morning real quick. It's not for no reason. Constantly being on the move lowers the baby's chance of getting perma-slept by predators. And in the cold, uncaring void of the ocean, perpetual motion helps keep them warm just long enough for their blubber to come in. It's great for the dolphin calves, but it means their mothers can go an entire calendar month without a wink of sleep. It's crazy because for us, driving while being awake for 24 hours straight is like driving boozed up under the influence. After two days, your immune system gets nerfed, so does your reaction time and even your decision making. And after three days, you'd be chilling with your paralysis demons, since that's when you can expect to start having hallucinations. The longest a person ever stayed awake that we know of was in an experiment for 264 hours and some change. Just over 11 days. You'll probably never see that record get broken since it would likely cost many lives in the process. Especially since at some point you'd go into micro sleep, where your body pretty much just forces your brain to go offline for up to 30 seconds at a time. It sounds like no big deal during class or at work, but get hit with micro sleep while driving, swimming, or flying a plane and you'll see firsthand just how broken real life RNG can be. So yeah, go on a bender with a dolphin and you'll tap out long before he does. Ironically, dolphins normally sleep just as much as humans do. Technically. On average, dolphins get the same 8 hours of sleep we do, except when they do it, it's when the two halves of their brain rest in shifts that add up to 4 hours each. And honestly, I just feel like we could get a whole lot more done if we rested only half of our brain at a time. Or all that extra time means we just speedrun the destruction of humanity, but one way or another, we'd be more productive. Productive is a word koalas never use, mostly because koalas can't speak English, but also because the plush bear of the outback catches more winks than any other mammal. If you ever spend a day in a life with a koala, 18 to 20 of those hours would be spent waiting for it to reboot back up again. And the reason is because the koala's defining personality trait is eating a plant that has made it abundantly clear it's not meant to be eaten. Not only is eucalyptus toxic, it's so nutrient deficient that koalas might honestly be better off eating dirt. Koalas eat dirt. That choice in diet is why koalas often cosplay as a corpse for over three quarters of its life. The eucalyptus leaves offer so little and takes so much energy to digest that most of a koala's life happens when it's not even conscious for it. And the time they don't spend in a food coma is spent eating, screaming, and spreading chlamydia. Or eating their mother's green fecal pat paste, so they can get the bacteria needed to digest eucalyptus in the first place. Because if there isn't a hell, there's definitely koala reincarnation. It's pretty much the same situation with sloths, eating nothing but leaves and getting almost the same nothing back. Which is why the sloth can knock out for a healthy 16 hours a day. Or at least that's what we thought. You see, the thing is, most of what we thought we knew about sloths came from the ones in captivity. As in the ones who live life on recruit difficulty and can afford to sleep like it. Sloths in the wild though, they get about a good 8-9 to nine hours of shut-eye max. Cause in the wild you have to get your own food while also avoiding becoming food. The reason we thought they were lazier than they actually are is because even when they're awake they actively try to move as little as possible. Because sloths have the slowest metabolism of any mammal while also only eating lettuce for a living, they're really stingy on what they choose to waste calories on. How stingy you ask? 
If a baby sloth loses his grip and falls to the forest floor, you can pretty much flip a coin on whether the mother spends the energy getting her only child back or just decides she'd rather start over. But yeah, despite its name, sloths don't sleep nearly as much as we thought. In fact, you might not even know, but their cousins sleep almost twice as much as they do. The sloth's close relative, the armadillo, can doze off for an average of 16 hours a day. How sloths ended up being the ones that got named after a whole sin is because when armadillos go to sleep, it's usually underground where we can't see them. It's also because most dillos are crepuscular, meaning they only come out early in the morning or right at dusk. And you know what? They're not the only members of the family that can outsloth a sloth. Giant ant eaters are also close cousins of armadillos and sloths, and they can turn in for a good 15 to 16 hours a day. And just like the sloth, giant ant eaters also have molasses for metabolism, and they go into pretty much the animal version of power save mode called torpor. Don't worry, we're gonna come back to that, but you peep how the sloth's name got a beef with the Bible when two of its cousins are literally more of a sloth than it is? So we talked about some of the animals that sleep the longest, but what about the one that sleeps the deepest? You've probably been taught that the deepest stage of sleep is REM sleep, short for rapid eye movement. Named after the fact that along with muscle twitching and irregular brain activity, the hallmark of REM sleep is the fluttering of the eyes with the eyelids still closed. Pretty much every land animal gets hit with the REM at some point, but there's one mammal that spends more time in this stage than any other animal. And I'm willing to bet nobody watching this will guess what it is. Seriously, I'll put money on it. Or maybe you will if you watch this show. Because when the talking Dorito says, he's a platypus, they don't do much. He wasn't that far off base. The duck bell flex of nature goes out like a light for an estimated 14 hours a day, which makes it just another animal that's closer to being a sin than the animal that actually got verbally tattooed as one. Honestly, the deeper I go into this, the more I'm realizing we owe Sloss an apology and a name change. But not only do platy people spend more time offline than on, in experiments, the REM stage of sleep for them lasted anywhere from five and a half to eight hours, more than we've seen in any animal. Just for your reference, if you slept eight hours last night, probably about 90 minutes of that was REM, maybe two hours if you were overachieving. And platy people in REM have the same symptoms we do, the random twitching, the brain activity despite their body pretty much having a parking brake on it, and of course, the eyes moving. The only difference is, for us, not all, but most dreams happen during the REM stage. But since studies show that platypes don't get the same activity in the forebrain while sleeping that we do, it's likely that this goose rabbit didn't evolve enough to have dreams. But you want to know who did? Well, you remember how I said virtually every land animal eventually falls into REM? There's a reason I didn't say only land. Not only does the octopus enter deep sleep, but we've seen them change color and skin texture almost as if they're trying to match the environment of whatever world they created in their head. So yeah, there's a good amount of evidence, mind you, scientific, peer-reviewed evidence that octopi can dream, or at least they try to. But they're also the polar opposite of the platypus, because where God Science Fair Project can REM for an entire work shift, the eight foots of the ocean spend less than a minute in that stage. Out of the two hours solo an octopus might go AFK for in a day, less than 1% of that is in the REM stage they go viral for. Which actually makes a lot of sense since a sleeping color switching octopus might be fun for us, but in an ocean where everyone's looking for a calorie come up, flashing your neighbors in your sleep is a good way to ensure you never wake up. You never know when a shark might pull up and promote you to a full-time napper. That logic is why you'll often see prey animals sleep less than the ones that murk them for a living. That and the fact that if you're something like a zebra, you often don't have to go very far for food. Now compare that to a lion who can often go days and sometimes even a week without groceries. Which is why you'll see a top predator like a lion call it in for 20 out of the 24 hours in a day. There's that, and sleeping during the hottest parts of the day and going food shopping when it's cooler and darker just makes more sense energy-wise. So pro tip, if you go to the zoo, make sure you go as soon as they open or as late as they'll let you since that's when star attractions like lions are most active. Same with tigers, who are usually closed for business for the roughly same 18 to 20 hours as lions. And the animals that have to worry about getting packed up by predators like that are on the opposite end of the sleep spectrum. Like wild giraffes will sometimes run on only 30 minutes of sleep, and like every other wild animal here, that's not all at once. They sleep for about 5 minutes at a time throughout the day, and all that still doesn't add up to a power nap for a person. An animal like a wild horse will take these little sleep breaks that add up to 3 hours in a day, and most of that's while standing, they only lay down for the REM. And since a horse laying down is a horse at its most vulnerable, many herds will develop their version of a neighborhood watch group, where one horse stands guard while the rest get theirs. The horses take turns keeping watch until everyone in the herd's gotten a chance to doze off, and I think that's pretty cool. Elephants earn the gold medal of sleep deprivation since those in the wild are often able to function off only an average of two hours of sleep a night. The rest of their time is spent either eating or looking for something to eat. Now, if you were paying attention, you might have noticed something. That the bigger animals like elephants and giraffes sleep way less than the smaller animals we already talked about. And one reason might simply just be because plus size animals just need to be awake long enough to eat more. Like elephants can put away 400 pounds of food a day, they not doing that on koala timing. But that's not too hard when you're the world's heaviest vegan. But when you're a bear with an empty pantry, it's a lot different. 
And when there's less food around, some animals will make like a struggling college student and just have sleep for dinner. That sleep being hibernation. Except hibernation isn't like how I was taught in grade school. Like bears don't just peace out for the entire winter and just rise like the undertaker come spring. Hibernation isn't sleep. It's torpor that lasts weeks, sometimes months. See, I told you we'd come back to that. And I wasn't kidding. It's like their version of a power save mode when the struggle gets too real outside. Their metabolism, heart rate, and even breathing all slow down as they live off whatever energy they were able to store up. And when I say they go on cruise control, I mean some bears can slow their heart rate down to less than 10 beats per minute. But once again, it's not sleep. A hibernating bear is still very much awake. Matter of fact, here's a plot twist. Bears aren't even true hibernators. Cause the legit hibernators, you know, the woodchucks, the bats, the squirrels, they pretty much just go a step above death and coming out of that takes a lot of energy and effort. Bears, on the other hand, they might as well just be the insomniacs of hibernators. What that means is if you mess around and manage to find a bear in its version of power save mode, it can still react fast enough to make sure you don't live long enough to find out twice. As you can see here, this man crossed the border of F around and now finds himself smack in the middle of find out city. So even though this built-in low battery mode technically isn't sleep, one animal managed to buff this to the point where they can sleep for years. And it's a very different type of bear. The tardigrade, or as streets know it, the water bear. You've probably already heard how weirdly stacked nature made them. Their personality trait is being able to survive anything except the things in life that actively try to kill them. And you know, now that we're talking about it, that's actually always been my gripe with them. I'm supposed to just accept the fact that there's a moss pit that can survive frigid, cold, boiling pools, enough radiation to retire Superman's family jewels, and the literal vacuum of space. Yet the same nematodes that nearly put SpongeBob in a shelter can pack them up like a blunt. But water bears do have one superpower. When life starts lifing a little too hard, water bears just slip into suspended animation. Basically, it's power save mode on steroids, and they can tank whatever the world throws at them without food or water for not years, but decades. They pretty much just shut down everything about them and just stay that way indefinitely. There was actually a time where a scientist found a water bear that got trapped in a sample of dried moss in a museum. All it took was a little water, and the swamp hawk came back to life after being stuck there for 120 years. So yeah, technically it's not sleep, and I am kind of cheating here, but when you can force quit out of life and not even die, you deserve to at least get mentioned. Even if the word swamp hog sounds like one of those things you should never Google. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent content, be sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram as you wait for the next video. And if you'd like to support my channel beyond just subbing, my Patreon's also gonna be in the description. Also, friendly reminder that I do have a book out, and that's also gonna be down there. But other than that, drink water, hug your mother, make sure you get some sleep. You kinda need that stuff, and you've definitely earned it. And I'ma see y'all in the next one.